is going to be another look at hyperspin and really considering what people need in a front end and what's valuable, what's useful. So I just threw together a really quick hyperspin setup here just so we could take a look at it and see what you're getting. Okay, so you have this full motion video intro, which is really kind of useless because it boots up faster than the intro can play, so why are you wasting time on that? And you can just see going through these menus that they're pretty random, weird, and inconsistent. I mean, like, why do I want to see Gex the Gecko when I'm looking at, you know, videos of other games? Why do I want to see Crash when I'm looking at videos of Tekken? I guess that one's okay. Yeah, and here we have a stretched to all hell video of games in main because Hyperspin doesn't really handle different aspect ratios correctly, so it's going to stretch out the screen to whatever the size of your monitor whatever resolution you run at. Yeah, so like I said, it's really a crapshoot. Some of them are okay, some of them are really weird and inconsistent. Get through this here and decide. Good job. There's also there's also I think kind of um, a problem with uh, the default setup on this thing because you don't really care about systems when you want to play a game. What you really care about is the games themselves because that's really one of the great things about emulation is that you can play games that were originally on all these different platforms, just on one platform. And so the idea is to get away from the idea of systems and those limitations and just focus on the games themselves. I mean, for example, if I have lists with Super Nintendo and MAME, well, the Super Nintendo has Mortal Kombat, MAME has Mortal Kombat, but do I really want both games? You know, do I really care about that? Shouldn't I really be looking for one-on-one -on -one fighting games and then based on that I select the best version of the particular one-on-one -on -one fighting game you know the best version of Mortal Kombat the best version of Street Fighter and so I just I didn't actually press anything on the keyboard but it's randomly moving through the list I just had to press a key to stop it uh, that's interesting <laughs> Yeah, and so I don't have any videos set up for all these games because who cares? Uh, but we can just launch a game for you to see how it works. I don't know, I'll do uh, something recognizable. Yeah, let's do let's do cyber bots here, I guess. I had to press enter and the space key like three times for it to start. Great for an end. Um, so it finally launched, and so this is a setup with HLSL, uh, you know, very uh, sharp image with scan lines. So it launches the games okay, that's fine. Um, see how the transition goes back into it, yeah, it's okay. Okay, so that's hyperspin, so, but, but let's say we want to do something more complicated. Let's say that we have an arcade cabinet setup where we're using a widescreen LCD, but we decided to only play 4-3 aspect ratio games and we have a bezel that's going to cover up the corners of the monitor so that the screen looks like it's a 4-3 monitor. Uh, oops, yeah, you'd have to redo all your hyperspin themes for that because they're all basically just getting stretched out to whatever your resolution is so that's no good. Uh, what about another scenario, you know, what happens if I 
have a vertical uh, monitor in my cabinets and I want to use hyperspin. We'll, we'll see how this will actually look. So I'll change my orientation here to uh, portrait mode. And now when I go in and launch hyperspin, it's going to stretch it all to full screen. Of course, you know, this is completely, completely distorted. And I have really weird aspect ratio everything. I have super thin and tall uh, characters there. And so basically, it isn't that attractive of a solution here. I mean, for what is supposedly a very appealing looking front end, I'm ending up with some pretty terrible visual quality here. Um, everything is stretched, everything's distorted, looks like crapola, basically. So I really have to wonder, you know, how good is hyperspin for this kind of thing? I mean, unless you're just going to use it as it is and uh, you don't really care about aesthetic consistency, you don't really care if half of the themes are really dumb and ugly, I guess that's okay. So just for comparison's sake, I'm in portrait mode here. Well, what happens if I run Big Blue in portrait mode? Oh, that's interesting. Everything is aspect ratio correct. Nothing stretched. And uh, I can, you know, just use this without distorted text or anything. Uh, my, my screenshots, there changes aspect ratio so I can use 4-3 screenshots. Huh, that's interesting. So, let's say that, um, you know, we want to try the other scenario. What happens if we want well, let me go back to landscape mode here. But let's say that we're going to use a widescreen monitor, but we want to use a bezel that's 4.3 and not show the sides of the widescreen monitor. Well, interestingly, there are other front-end options where you can actually select a letterboxing. And now, when you run this Oh, look at that, look at that, I have a 4-3 image, so I can have a 4-3 bezel, I can, uh, you know, put the bezel over the monitor, hide the sides, and now it looks like I have a 4-3 screen. screen, that's that's interesting, so I actually have options as opposed to just bi blindly stretching crap out and making it look hideous. So really, hyperspin, eh, I don't think so. Um, when you really look at hyperspin, all of its convoluted and dumb configuration options, you know, that, that really don't get you any additional features, just make things more complicated, you really have to ask, you know, what's going on here? And um, you can pretty much sum up what's going on here with one word. And uh, that word is... Money. So... If you look into hyperspin at all, it's all about becoming a gold member. Uh, you know, paying people to put together hyperspin setups for you, paying for videos, all that. I mean, it's purposely convoluted just for the sake of selling something, not because any of these features actually help you with anything. There are other front ends that actually have more configuration options, yet are simple to use. Why? Because they don't care if you give them money. They're actually trying to make it easy and convenient to set up your cabinet. So yeah, uh, hyperspin, I don't think so.